Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. It is currently about 10 to 10 on Sunday the 2nd of May. Dane reads. I'm currently reading In the Miso Suit by Ryu Murakami and uh, I'm off to do some more of that now. I just had to film this intro bit because otherwise I forget to film intros. I'm terrible for it. Tell him off, tell Dane off. Hello, it is Monday the 3rd of May, it's 9 p.m. Uh, after not really getting much sleep the other night, I did another one of my like 18 hour sleeps. So I woke up at about 6 p.m. today after going to bed at about 10 half 10 last night. Which is a little bit crazy, um, but I did have a quite nice dreams. So that's kind of why I kept going back to sleep to go back into my dreams, you know. It's been raining all day here, which is pretty typical for a bank holiday. Uh, yesterday I did, I went to the Flint Cottage, uh, which is a pub that used to be called the Bootlegger. Um, and they, it's really annoying because they pride themselves on their like range of beers and wines and spirits they offer. But they didn't have any non-alcoholic ones. So I was just there, I had like five lemonades and was like pissing like a horse, it was crazy. Um, saw a few of my friends there. Uh, <laughs> should we say that? Yeah, one of them who I quite fancy. But uh, anyway, so she was she was getting pissed. Dave was getting pissed. Jordana wasn't getting pissed. My friend Jordana, because she had to go to work. Uh, and oh, and I met her new boyfriend as well, which is really nice because this is some guy she's been in love with for like years since before I ever met her. Um, and they've never like been together together, but they're I don't know. Out of all the people I know. They're like one of those couples, it's like, they should be together. I don't know what they're fucking doing. So it's nice that they're finally together. So yeah, all of this shit going on. And uh, some music as well, which was nice. Although the problem was, because it was outside, I still haven't warmed up from it. So I'm still really cold. Uh, and it's quite cold in my, in my uh, flat, so I've ordered a new heater as well. Got no news on the house buying process yet, because that's all like, it's just all up in the air. It, it, I'm waiting for the mortgage guy and uh, my solicitors to do next steps. I can't really do anything other than keep working. So, uh, but my work has actually dried up. I was meant to have a phone call with somebody this morning, and obviously I slept through it, which isn't good. Uh, and it's just been a quiet day, I think in part because it's a bank holiday. So I've been doing some art centre stuff, uh, some marketing, some websitey bits. And uh, yeah, this evening I'm going to do some a lot of editing uh, because I've been doing some of the uh, interviews for my radio show. So today I chatted to Ken Boiter, who's a fantasy author. Um, so that's a lot of fun. So I've done three interviews in three days and I've got another one tomorrow night. So that's essentially a month's worth of radio shows of the interviews done. So I just need to actually pull the shows together and edit them together. So that's what I'm currently working on. Uh, reading wise I finished that Spike Milligan book so I think I probably updated you on that last time in fact I did because I said I was reading in the miso soup which I'm still reading I'm near the end now uh, it's still pretty good and then next I'm gonna read Senior Nice by Howard Marks although I imagine some books are gonna arrive in the post tomorrow I also have um, some vinyl singles coming in the post which is very exciting and uh, I've been wondering would you guys be interested in a video of like my vinyls collection? So I can do two, I, I would do, sorry, vinyl, plur, uh, pl the plural of vinyl is vinyl. Uh, uh, yeah, so I could do my collection of singles, which I'll show you. This, oh, I'm out of focus again. Here we go. This is my collection of singles. It's in this nice little box. Oh God. And uh, if I can open it, here we go. As you can see, my singles collection. Oh, it is pretty dope. Let's pull one out at random. What's this one we got here? This one is John Holt. Help me make it through the night. Some nice reggae. All right, what have we got here? Looking here. Simon and Garfunkel, America. We've actually got a bunch of like full length vinyls by them as well. Vinyl. So a full bunch of full length vinyl. Oh, let's do one more at random. Let's go. This one. What's this one? This one is. Oh, Del Shannon, Two Silhouettes and My Wild One. I love Del Shannon, it's great. So yeah, as you can tell, this box is full. It's very hard, I can't even close it now, there we go. Luckily I do have another one of these boxes in the other room. So I'm gonna have to start decanting. Especially, well, so the, the one I've run on eBay, I've got 20, 50s and 60s singles coming. And there's some great ones. There's like the single of Albatross by Fleetwood Mac. Um, I can't remember what else is in it. That's the one that really stood out to me. I think there's some Rolling Stones in there, uh, some Beatles, I think. So, and, and I paid like eight pound for 20 of these. And like, I think Albatross, I think I used to have that as a single before and actually sold it for six quid, which is basically how much I paid for all 20 of these. So that's exciting. Hey up, it's Saturday. 
It's, uh, what is it, 7.40pm on Saturday the 8th of May. God, my sleep has been weird. I had such a weird dream last night. Um, I mean, so yeah, well, okay. So we did, oh fuck, I don't know when I last did an update, but um, we did some training earlier this week, which was uh, at the art center, which was scaffold training. So, you know when you see builders using scaffolding towers, it's basically that. Uh, which obviously is an art centre, we can use it for putting up lights and all of this other stuff. So we were becoming PASMA accredited, uh, they're the organisation that kind of oversees it all. And basically it just, it all kept going horribly wrong. So we've got our own scaff tower, but uh, and the company that was providing the training said that the scaff tower we had would be sufficient, but it turns out not because it doesn't have a particular type of scaffolding that's required for this course. So they hired in this scaff tower and we did the training and we put some photos on social media and basically PASMA, the company that oversees it, saw our photos and uh, determined from looking at them that our scaff tower was about 15 to 20 millimeters too short so we're talking that much too short so we're not accredited and we have to redo the training so that's really annoying but yes, so I was doing that earlier this week um, so yeah, then yesterday uh, was Friday. That's when I found out we had to redo the training and I kind of feel as though it's my fault in a way because it was me who posted the photos even though it's the guy who did the training like he should have known better than to you know anyway he was the one who arranged like their company cocked up twice basically because they told us that our scaff tower would be good enough and then they hired this other tower because they told us our tower would be good enough and then they hired a tower that wasn't good enough so anyway um, so I'd been up most of Thursday night and so I went to bed at like 4 or 5 p.m. Friday Woke up at like 2 a.m. Got up for a few hours and then went back to bed at about 6 a.m. for a couple of hours And I got stuck in this like weird dream loop Where I was aware I was dreaming and it was a nightmare And I'd make myself wake up and I'd wake up in my bedroom And then I'd realise I was still dreaming And then I'd make myself wake up again And then I just went straight back into this other dream So I was on this like big island with a dome over it, like Under the Dome by Stephen King. And I remember specifically there was a book that Asimov had co-written with somebody else. It's like a fictional book in my dream. But um, I was reading this book and I was like, maybe that's why. Uh, and there was a specific thing in this as well where Asimov was using the word, um, oh, what was it? Barren, that was it. He was saying that like, oh, women have become barren, meaning they can't bear children. And basically this dream started out, I was at an art center event and, um, they basically they'd set up this event for Saturday today um, even though in reality we've called off today because we were going to do an open mic because it's raining so I in my dream was like why are you doing this event like we, we called off the other event if we were going to do an event we could have just done the same event and then nobody would explain why so I told my boss to fuck off um, then I had to climb up this massive hill and then at the top of this hill there was this mausoleum and this band was there and they were playing um, uh, Louis Armstrong, um, St. James Infirmary, which turned out to be quite apt because basically this, this island was like a, a massive insane asylum where people were allowed to wander the streets and obviously I was trapped there. But I didn't discover this for a little while. While we were at this gig, I trod on this girl's foot and she wasn't wearing shoes and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. And there was like this big crowd at the gig and they were like bumping everyone and it bumped this girl into me and like we accidentally kissed, I guess. Then we properly kissed. Then we went down to the beach because I think we were gonna go and have sex in the sea. Except then we realized we could see the big old fucking dome that was like trapping us in there. So then we, then we were like panicking about that. Then I woke up and I was in bed and I was wearing pajamas and I was like, these aren't my pajamas, oh shit, I'm still dreaming. So then I went, tried to wake up again and then ended up back on the island, back at the top of this hill where the, the, the lass had gone. Uh, and then I was like trying to hack my way out and there were like all these computer screens with like matrix shit on and I was trying to like hack my way out of this dream and it wasn't happening. Then I woke up again in my bedroom and I opened up the curtains and all of the world had been like firebombed outside my house and I was like this is still a dream isn't it so I tried to wake myself up again and I was back on the fucking island oh it was a night like actual nightmare and also the worst thing is like it was like a lucid dream like I knew I was dreaming but I couldn't get out of it like I thought I was dead I was like this is just what what death must be just going backwards and forwards in this fucking dream 
It was weird, it was really weird. And then when I finally did wake up, I came through here, and then, what was it that I'd been watching? I'd been watching something that I think might have contributed to this weird dream shit. And I can't remember what it was now, but I'd been watching a movie or something, and I was like, oh, maybe I got this from the movie. Um, oh no, that was it. I'd been editing my review of Fellside, which is set in an insane, uh, is set in a prison, sorry. But I think maybe that was part of where I got it from. It was weird, and yeah, like, I was messaging my friends being like, I is this reality? Like, am I awake now? Because I couldn't tell because my dreams are so realistic. As since I quit smoking, I, when I was a kid, I used to have lots of really realistic dreams and lots of nightmares. And they kind of went away as I got a bit older, but it was to do with smoking. So since I quit smoking, my dreams have become much more vivid. And like, I'm not drinking or anything at the moment as well. Like, I'm, pre I'm straight edge. Like, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. I do caffeine, I do a lot of caffeine. But uh, yeah, so like, I don't know, my dreams have just been super weird of late, and this was one of the most vivid of them all, and it was just fucking horrible. Anyway, today I have been working, I've just recorded uh, a little audio, like a mini audio book, I guess, of one of the stories from Scarlet Sins, because uh, obviously Susie has done a bunch of them for my radio show, we've now got to the end of the ones that she's recorded, and like, I think she did offer to do some more, but I've had a few comments being like, you should do them, and you know, I mean, I was kind of doing them, letting her do them as a favour because it's like she is into like voice acting and acting and this kind of stuff, and it's like on the radio and all this shit. But yeah, so I recorded uh, Diploma Marked, which is one of the stories from Scarlet Sins. So I've just done that. I'm now catching you up with my little vlog. I've got a few other bits to film, a few reviews and stuff to do. Um, what else? I did some guitar earlier. So in terms, oh and I've been listening to loads of vinyls, I've actually got to box sets now, so I'm currently listening to the Reader's Digest Festival of International Hits, um, and I'm editing some radio stuff as well, so I've edited my radio show with Clara, who's a local singer-songwriter, which is going to be out next Tuesday, Tuesday the 11th, and then after that we've got K.R. Boiter, uh, who's a fantasy author, which is going to be very cool, and uh, he's done, he's, he sent me one of his uh, readings, and it's 40 minutes long, so... The uh, full edition of the art show will have the full story, but on the radio we'll have to cut it to like eight minutes or something. But uh, yes, yeah, so I've been editing that and uh, I've done all of my eBay listing now actually as well. So my eBay store is now up to date. There's 12 grand worth of shit on there if it all sells, which would be very nice. Uh, all goes towards the house and stuff. I don't have any real updates to give you on that at the moment. Um, my lawyers have received the contract from the seller's lawyers. Uh, and they've got the money from me, so that's the balls in their court there. And I haven't heard back from my, my mortgage guy. I didn't hear back from him all week, so I don't know. I just want to get that sorted, really. And yeah, just cracking on with reading. So since I last chatted to you, I read, I finished reading Mr. Nice by Howard Marks. This was probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. Enjoyable travel writing, and he's like learning about his Welsh heritage and stuff, which was quite interesting. Then I read A Christmas Carol 2, Contagion, by Charles Dickens and Bruno Vincent. So this is basically like a zombie apocalypse take on A Christmas Carol by Dickens. Um, it was okay, I was actually expecting it to be a lot better, but hey ho, there are some nice little gore bits in it. He like, puts a hyphen through any swear words, including like goddamn and all this kind of stuff, because that was what was done in the time. But yeah, I, pro I gave this like a 3 out of 5, because I was expecting a lot more. It was okay, but it, it was def definitely very gimmicky. Uh, not like what I've just read after that, actually, which was, it's over there at the moment. Um, the Force Doth Awaken, William Shakespeare's Star Wars by Ian Dersher. Um, and that was well written and is like a lot less gimmicky. It actually reads like a proper Shakespeare play, you know? But my problem with that is that I didn't like the new Star Wars movies. I haven't really followed it since Disney bought it. Uh, because I used to read a lot of what are now the legends, but used to be like the expanded universe So I'm kind of mad about that still and I'm just I'm not really interested, you know Most new films. I, I don't really care. I just watch documentaries uh, But I am gonna rewatch it. But yeah, I gave the play a three out of five purely because I don't particularly like the source material It was all right though. Like I mean if you're a Star Wars fan you'd enjoy it a lot more but I mean it just is a mark of how much <laughs> how much I did, I, I'm not interested in, in the new Star Wars films, that I preferred uh, The Phantom of Menace to it. And also, like, I struggled to tell what was going on. 
Uh, and bear in mind, I have seen The Force Awakens. I've only seen it once, but um, there were times when I was like, what the hell's going on? Who's this guy? Who's that guy, you know? So in a way, it was actually more like reading a Shakespeare play that I haven't studied or ever seen. So there was that. I also read Why I Am Afraid of Bees by R.L. Stein. Uh, this is just a random Goosebumps book. It's one of the original run. And uh, this was actually, what is it from? Yeah, the, this book was donated to the library by Grime Thought Partnership using proceeds from a concert held by Grime Thought Band. So this was donated to Barnsley Libraries. Up north, it's up north, up near Manchester, away a fucking thing. I don't know, I've started talking like devil. Fucking MC devil. Fucking Barnsley Massive, innit? Anyway, uh, I, I, I'm in a strange mood today, as you can see. I drank a lot of coffee. I, got, I, got, I was like almost falling asleep again this afternoon and I was just sort of so freaked out by those weird dreams that I had. And also this guy was coming around because he bought um, a symbol from me uh, on eBay and it was like local collection. So he looked like me when I was 17 except he had a moustache which I never had. But, but yeah, why I'm afraid of bees basically it's like one of those body swap stories. This, this kid's having a shitty old life and um, he goes to this company that like promises to swap his body with someone else's but it all goes wrong and he swaps with a bee uh, and then it kind of follows his quest to get back into his normal self it was all right 3.5 out of 5. i mean i think the goosebumps books hold up remarkably well as an adult so you know i enjoyed it and i'm now reading uh, ian banks espadare street so this is about a musician uh, or a bunch of musicians like a fictional band and what's interesting about this one, somebody at one of the Art Centre events, a poet called Nigel Cresswell, who funnily enough, I, I spoke to him for my radio show as well, got to edit that still, but he recommended it to me at this uh, at the Art Centre um, Sunday, Sunday Acoustic Jam. And then when I was interviewing, no, when I was talking to Ken Boiter, K.R. Boiter, for his radio show, uh, for his podcast, and he's also a medium, and he was like, the, the spirits want to pass on a, a note to you. They, they said like, are you into Ian Banks? And I was like, oh, I've, only, I've only ever read one of his books. I read one of his sci-fi Ian M. Banks books. And he said, the spirits are telling me to read Espadare Street. And uh, I was like, no, well that's weird, because somebody told me to read this the other day, and I'd never heard of it before then. So I'm reading that now, and one of my first observations is the main character's 31, which is how old I am. So there's kind of a lot for me to relate to it. But I'm going to have to go now because I'm in fat burn mode on my Fitbit for some reason and my throat's hurting from talking. Although, I, again, I did play a lot of guitar earlier. So uh, I'm going to go and read some more Espadare Street and I will give you a little update tomorrow. Hello! It is... Oh, my Fitbit is on charge. It is Monday the 10th of May at about 9pm, something like that. My sleep's been pretty good lately. Uh, I don't mean to brag. Uh, I, know I say pretty good. I've been going to bed at like 9, 10 p.m. So I'm actually up late for me at the moment. Because I had a bit of a, bit of a lie in today. I say lie in. I got up at 9 p.m. I think. Oh, sorry. I have just finished eating a pizza. It was delicious. It was a homemade pizza. Uh, I like to make the dough myself and stuff. I actually set a new speed record. So it took me five minutes to mix the dough, give it a quick knead, and then just put it on the side to air out and then to grate some vegan cheese as well. So I was well impressed with that. So the whole prep time, probably probably about 10 minutes prep time because I gave it, oh, excuse me. It's probably about 10 minutes prep time totally, uh, including giving the dough a second knead and sorting the toppings and stuff. Uh, vegan pepperoni was very nice. What has been happening? Well, I've been doing a lot of work. I've um, been working with some new clients. Um, one of them is like a tech guru based in Israel. So it's a lot of fun to work with him. Uh, he's been through Y Combinator, which is like a, a startup booster thing, essentially, uh, where they kind of invest in you and stuff. A lot of like Reddit and stuff like that were going through it at the same time as him, which is very cool. So I've been doing some writing for him. Uh, I was at the art centre today for a website meeting uh, and we now know what we're doing with the new website and that's hopefully going live on June the 1st. Touched some wood, bookcase. So there is that. Um, what else have I got to talk to you about? In terms of books, I don't know if I've got too much to say. I have finished reading, it's down here. Uh, so, J'ai lu Argosini et sur le tour de Gaulle d'Astrix. C'est un bande dessinée. En français, uh, numéro 5 ish. Je ne sais pas, uh, mais c'est très bon. Um, le chien, il fixe, il est ici. Uh, 
mais il n'est pas dans l'histoire, il est sauf dans, dans le, le uh, côté de nos, nos héros, uh, Asterix et Obelix. Il est gros, il est petit, c'est un cheval, c'est deux chevaux uh, et un chariot. <laughs> Donc, uh, c'est très bien, uh, j'ai uh, uh, mis ce livre uh, wow. 3.5 sur 5, je ne sais pas, mais uh, oui, c'est une uh, re revue en uh, français, tu peux voir si mon français n'est pas le meilleur, mais uh, au revoir livre. Anyway, <laughs> so I read that, and then uh, after that, j'ai lu uh, Ian Banks' Espadas Street. C'est un livre uh, en anglais. Uh, it's set in Scotland, but also, you know, tout le monde. Uh, and yeah, they, they, you know, they go out and they go on tour, and it follows this musician guy uh, after the band breaks up. Uh, il y a, uh, you know, un peu de mort. Uh, some people die, and um, you know, it's like watered down Irvin Welsh, is how I would describe it. But I am still glad I read it. I read it because it was recommended to me by a poet friend and also a writer friend, an écrivain, uh, who is also a medium, not a large. Uh, so basically, this poet guy that I know recommended it to me at one of our art centre events. And then I was interviewing K.R. Boiter, he's a writer. Uh, but he also does art and stuff, he's an actor as well, and he's a medium, and while we were doing the interview, he was like, yeah, the spirit's telling me um, something about Ian Banks, are you into Ian Banks? And I was like, well, mais j'ai lu uh, Sermon and Leave, I only read one book, but um, yeah, and I read Ian M. Banks as well, um, which is a science fiction uh, alias, but yeah, uh, he told me to read Espadare Street, so I did, and it was like 3.5 out of 5. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. Up next, I got some books in the post today that I need to film the haul for in a minute. I got some Asimov and James Herbert, so I'm probably going to read some James Herbert next because they're quite short. Here comes Biggie. Oh, hello! Ra ra ra! Hello! Hi, Biggie. Biggie's been a bit upset today, haven't you? Because Daddy, Daddy did a boo boo. Um, we there are these. Um, they're called uh, carpet moths and they are very annoying um, and there are some in my house at the moment so I've got some spray for them but I got this like it's one of the like smoke bomb things basically and it, I read the instructions and it was just like close all the windows and then light it like a candle so I did set my fucking smoke alarm off filled my entire bedroom with smoke so thick you could hardly see through it so I had to go and open the window. Then my neighbor came down and was like, are you all right, do you need me to call the fire brigade? And I was like, well, yeah, I just didn't expect it to be this extreme, you know? So Biggie's been hiding behind the sofa, derriere le canapé uh, aujourd'hui. C'est vrai, non, chat? Oui. Tu as faim? Tu as mort de faim? He's dying of hunger, he's starving. Oui. Où est la nourriture de chat? C'est dans la salle de bain. Ouais, mais les toilettes. Donc, parce que uh, j'ai seulement une douche. douche. Uh, je n'ai pas un bain. Hélas. Mais, uh, oui. So, anyway, I don't know why I'm speaking so much French. Oh, because I've been chatting to my French pen pal. She speaks so quickly. Listen to this. Right. You've heard my French. Now let's hear French from a proper French person. En anglais, nous avons... Uh, Carl, oh, that's me talking about Cockney rhyme and slang. Hang on. And then he was jailed uh, in Lithuania and transferred to France, alors que la Belgique et la Suisse uh, sont des pays frontaliers. Donc forcément, le français qui parle est vraiment plus proche du français de France. Oh, I can understand that. She's talking about Belgian and Swiss, Swiss people speak closer French to um, French, like French, French people, than um, Canadian French. Mais après, euh, en France, euh, on a pas mal de... Enfin, par exemple, c'est Lindion, Garou, c'est des chanteurs québécois qui sont très connus en France, très populaires. Euh, donc moi, je les ai déjà entendus parler en... She's talking about somebody, a singer who's popular in France. 
um, but I kind of lose a lot of the, the nuances and stuff so I don't know I'm getting better but it's a good way to practice but yeah that's where we're at uh, as it's Monday I suppose I should finish this week's vlog I'm off to get a tattoo tomorrow which is very exciting so where I have my books here is going to be uh, Vivi from Final Fantasy 9 underneath and getting a similar coloured thing got these over here I was at the pub the other day and someone was like I didn't know you've got tattoos and it's like well at this point they're all over my fucking arms like you can see I've got tattoos just when I stand like this <laughs> and I guess I have an another one I'm kind of working on not like a sleeve although maybe eventually but I'm just sort of slowly covering up my arms with tattoos basically so yeah after this after um, my Vivi I want to get probably a snake Ouroboros going around my wrist here uh, devouring its own tail which kind of symbolizes eternity um, and that's just a piece of imagery I really love to be honest and what else there was something else that I wanted to get as well kind of been that important can it but the reason that I want to get Vivi from Final Fantasy 9 few reasons it's one of my favorite video games ever um, and it's also he's like a badass design as well he's a black mage but um, spoiler alert if you've not played that game I mean it's getting on for it it's not much younger than I am <laughs> but um, yeah Vivi is a clone and they only have a limited lifespan and so he's like very conscious of his own mortality which is something like I have death anxiety so I relate to that as well and as I say it's one of my favorite games and I particularly love the storytelling in it as well as the visual style actually so there are just a lot of things going for it but yeah that brings us to the end of this week's reading vlog so as always merci beaucoup pour regarder mon video a uh, Smash that, uh, frappe le bouton de subscribe. <laughs> uh, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Merci beaucoup, au revoir.